I know. Welcome everyone to the City of Mobile Work Session for May 15, 2018 at approximately 531. I call this meeting in order. Roll call, please. Mayor Santiago. Here. Commissioner Pepitone. Here. Vice Mayor Parent. Here. Commissioner Udalavis. Here. Commissioner Cooper. Here. Can we all stand, please, and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Bear with me, please. I have allergies, and the pollen's not helping me. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of 1975. It was advertised, posted, and made available to the public as required by law. The municipal clerk is directed to include a statement in the minutes of this meeting. Madam Clerk, are there any review changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Mayor, there was a new business discussion item added regarding Liberty Village proposed rent control ordinance. And as you can see, they're well represented today. <laughs> old business. Under old business, we have a discussion item, item regarding the Vineland Millville UEZ, and I'm gonna defer to our solicitor. Mr. Jacobs, the floor is yours. Do you want to step up to the mic? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Frederick Jacob, and I'm representing tonight the Liberty Village Homeowners and Tenants Association. There are approximately 65 property owners. Actually, there's zero property owners. There's 30, 65 homeowners in Liberty Village and 46 are in the association and several of them are here tonight. Just to make you aware of the situation, Liberty Village is on South 2nd Street near to where Orange Street comes out on the east side of Route 47. This was developed in the year 2006. Several of the property owners here tonight have been original owners ever since 2006. This is an upscale community. Most of my clients paid somewhere between 160 and 200,000, some of them more, for the properties. But you've got to understand that they don't own the land. What they own is the home. And the land all around it as far as the grass and the sidewalks and the streets, they are controlled by the property owner. So everything was peaceful in Liberty Village until the original developer sold out to Hometown America. Hometown America owns a number of manufactured home communities in the tri-state area. And typically, they don't provide services. And they bought uh, a village in which all the services were provided and these people bought their homes on the basis that the grass is going to be cut and the gas lines are going to be kept up and the streets are going to be plowed and uh, the trees are going to be cut. So this was purchased in August of 2016. Most of my clients began to get new leases in the summer of 2016. 17. Now keep in mind in the old leases with the original property owner, he pledged right in the lease never to raise the rent more than the consumer price index. That was the incentive for people to buy their homes. He also disclosed exactly what the charges were for that he incurred to cut the grass to shovel the snow to uh, have 
the trash collected. And he disclosed that each year. Originally, it was just $70. It went up. Now it's $237. And maybe the current owner can justify it, but they won't disclose it. They won't break it down. Well, we paid this much to cut the grass. We paid this much to remove the snow. We're paying this much for trash. We pay this much in city taxes because they – so all that is prorated by 65. And they won't disclose what their costs are, despite the fact that there is a state statute that, in my opinion, requires them to do it. They and their attorney take the position, well, we've got to disclose what we pay in taxes, but other than that, we're not required to do that. So that may be an attorney dispute, but I'm asking you to pass – a rent control ordinance because this is a train wreck coming down the track. My clients have not signed the new leases that they've now had for eight months or six months or nine months, whatever it is. I've advised them not to sign them. They're still paying the rent. but. This outfit could raise the rent by 10 percent next year or 15 percent. And then what are they going to do? Take their manufactured homes off of the pad, destroy a great portion of the house, and try to move them elsewhere? Uh, this outfit has all the leverage. And they're being sued all over the place in Delaware. And Delaware as a state is on the verge of passing a rent control ordinance. I don't expect to see that at the state level in New Jersey. The owners of these mobile home parks and manufactured home communities have too much leverage statewide. So we have to turn to the city of Millville and ask you not to let them raise the rent more than the consumer price index, which was 2.45 percent in 2017, 2.5 percent in 2018. Again, the previous owner pledged it right in his lease that he would never raise the rent more than the consumer price index. In the first five years, he didn't raise the rent at all. But I have a letter that the attorney for the new owners sent to the president of the association before I got involved, and he asked her why the new leases didn't have this clause of, with the consumer price index rent protection. And they said, because we don't have to. Millville has no rent control ordinance. We can raise the rent whatever we want to as long as it's not unconscionable. And let me tell you, if these people have to go before a judge to prove that a 6 percent rent increase is unconscionable, that's a really tough sell and it costs a lot of legal fees and even if Hometown America loses, they've got the deep pockets. These people will pay all the money, so even if they win, they lose. The only protection they would have is for you to pass a rent control ordinance. Now, Pittsgrove passed one back in the 1990s, and I've looked at it and since during the year I was solicitor, I had a lot of practice writing ordinances uh, under the prior commission. I took a crack at drafting one, but uh, only as a model for your solicitor to look at and check it out at the state level and see if he thinks 
it fits. So other than limiting the rent through this consumer price index and requiring them to disclose the charges, the other big component of the ordinance is, well, what happens if Hometown America wants to make a big capital improvement and now to attract new people, they want to bit, uh, put uh, a clubhouse for a million and a half dollars or put a big swimming pool in. Uh, I did draft some protections in the ordinance so that there'd have to be public meetings and they'd get a chance to have their say. Uh, it's not saying they can't do it. Uh, capital improvement could be a good thing, but it would affect greatly what they have to pay each month. So I'm going to call it this time on the past president of the association, uh, George Kanais. If you would come to the microphone, George, and the first thing I'd like you to address firsthand, to your knowledge, you, you, you bought in the first year, is that correct? Yeah. 2006. Have you ever seen a, a, a manufactured home move off of the pad and out of this park in the 12 years that have gone by since? No, no homes have ever been moved out, okay? They've only been sold sometimes at ridiculously low prices just because people wanted to get at it, okay? Somebody passed away, they would inherit it. <coughs> Somebody that's not even old enough might receive the house itself not be able to live there, okay? So they well, just look at the idea of unloading the house, give me what I can, and I'll go out and party, the young people. All right, but if you get into a dispute with uh, the owner of the, the uh, community, then you'd have to move your house off of the I, site, right? My personal so, home, okay? Right, now tell, tell, tell the commissioners what that would entail to move your home that you bought in 2006 off of that site? I would have to go to an outside contractor, okay, in order to move this. And I'm gonna say 75% of my home would have to be destroyed. The upper level of my home is finished. I put in a bedroom there for grandchildren coming over and a large playroom for them. It's equal to the size of my house. And to move that house, the roof has to be dropped, therefore the entire second floor has to be gutted. Then after that's done, the house has to be basically split in half, placed on wheels and try to move them. I have no idea of the cost, but you can probably imagine it's quite costly to do something like that. That's one of the reasons people have moved out of their homes and sold them far less than what they paid for them. I can tell you that my home, okay, cost close to 200000 And now that included a one-car detached garage, okay? That, I mean, can't even be moved. It's just destroy it. Okay, any other questions? Yes, why don't you also address uh, how many times you've asked them to break down the services and address when people have sent in the rent but withheld the amount for services, whether they okay. accepted that. Um, when we got our, originally when they took over, okay, they had an original lease that we were very happy with. Everything was listed as far as cost and actually every item was described as far as snow removal, trash, so forth. In other words, the prior owner did that. Yeah. Okay, when they bought the property, it was five weeks after we signed that lease with him. And they honored that lease for the first year with no problem. We got several letters saying that everything would be in accordance with our lease, including the rent increases. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the case. They have eliminated all reference to services. They're saying everything is just rent. And that would take our rent portion from under $200, okay, up to like seven, eight hundred dollars Now that, you know, is what we're concerned about. 
they could eliminate all services that we have been, quote, entitled to. The reason we bought these homes, the reason we paid the amount we paid for them. Maybe foolish on our part, okay, not to have a lifetime, you know, set up with it, but this is what we've been faced with. Um, we actually went and everybody, uh, quite a few of the people here went and attended a meeting that was held in the library and it was run by the Cumberland and Salem County South Jersey Legal Services. And an individual actually gave us, okay, a statement leading us in the direction to look at the state guidelines, the protections that should be offered to us. And we found them, we referred these items to Hometown America, and they basically said, we don't have to do that. Okay, this is the lease we use, and we have no intention of changing it. And it, we're quite concerned about that statement. They have said it several times to us, and that is why we can't sign the lease that they gave us. They gave us a lease, X amount of pages, then they gave us a description on how to live in the community. Those two items disagree with one another. And it's always going to be the worst case scenario is going to be put on the homeowner. So we're very concerned about that. I have four handouts that I would like to give to you to review, okay, if you would like. Um, it may help to answer, okay, any questions you may have. Can you hand them right over to our clerk? Absolutely. I would be happy to. Okay, and I have one other person I'd like to call uh, Marlene Panicelli, uh, one of the first two or three owners, I believe, in Liberty Village from back in 2006. And she's been the glue that has held the Homeowners Association together and, and helped make it as strong as it is. Hello. Thank you. I agree with uh, what Mr. Jacob has said uh, that they have just not been providing us with the services for our uh, lawns and for our snow removal. Uh, we've had to almost beg to have things cleaned, especially for some of our folks uh, that have to keep appointments, early morning appointments with doctors. Uh, they've had to shovel part of their driveways themselves to get out. Uh, we don't seem to be able to get through to them that this is part of what was paid for and this is what we expect. Uh, I want to read to you something that um, Crystal Bennett uh, had in one of her letters to us. Now she is the manager at Berryman's. I don't think she's here this evening. Uh, and to paraphrase, we sent a lease that we use at each of our other New Jersey 55 plus communities, but failed to correct the services offered for Liberty Village as you are a very unique community. They have lumped us in with Berryman's Branch, which is primarily, um, what do I wanna say, a trailer park. And we're nothing like that at all and they can't seem to understand that we need this lease changed so it applies to us and, and, and individually, not to be part of Berryman's branch. And um, I, I think in, in, in finalizing, we've had a difficult time dealing with hometown America. We just cannot seem to make them understand that we have purchased there because we were going to get all these benefits and we're not getting them. And to give you one very good example, the uh, light in front of my home was hit by one of the pieces of equipment that they mow the lawn with. And when I, I went out to take the dog out, I realized that I was in darkness out front. And the pole is listing like this, and I have no light. 
I called on Monday to report it. Now, this is not this yesterday. This is last week. And I said, you know, I'm leaving all the lights on in my house in order to have my yard lit the way it would be lit if the, the street light was on. I have yet to hear from them. Not a person's come. I've not had a phone call. This is the kind of thing that we're dealing with, and it's just not acceptable. And that, that I'll make myself short there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to call any other witnesses. <coughs> I, I think you get the picture. I mean, this is a David and Goliath situation. Basically, if they decide to raise the rent or I mean, they've already decided they have no obligation to disclose what the services cost. They have, my clients have <coughs> nothing that they can fall back on. They are helpless without the city's help. This really is an emergency. Uh, the ordinance that uh, I'm proposing and your solicitor was very nice. Uh, we had a very good discussion. We made sure that uh, Hometown America's lawyer knew that I was coming tonight, and <coughs> he personally talked to her. So they're on notice that uh, the commission will be considering this. It's up to you, of course, what to do with it, but uh, we really hope the city sees that these people absolutely need help. This is an emergency. If eight months with nobody signing a lease because the lease is completely unacceptable is not a collision that's coming, uh, I don't know what is. So, Question. yes. Are leases made on a yearly basis or yeah. for a long period of time? Yes, they're year to year. So the lease really doesn't give them any protection for any more than a year. They're basically operating under the lease because they refused to sign them to Hometown America of what the original Liberty right. Village lease was. That's what we're operating under. But they could say, get out at any time, and the law is on their side without your ordinance. Mm. Okay. Thank a you very Any much. other questions? Uh, any other questions? Has there been any, any poignant discussions with, with them at this point? Yes, I mean, my clients wrote to them for three months before they hired me. I've written to their attorney three different times, and I actually bought a copy of the letter she originally wrote to Mr. Kanais saying that we can raise the rent whatever we want as long as it's not unconscionable and we have no obligation to disclose what we're paying for these services once $70, 12 years later, 237. So Mr. Jacob, are they comparing Liberty Village to our two trailer parks that we have now, South Nova and over on Riverside, or um, what am I saying, Silver Run Road? That's, the latter two are more what they're used to taking care of which basically they charge lot rent and don't take care of as compared to this situation. But the ordinance that I put in draft form would protect the mobile home parks as well as the manufactured communities, which this is. So it would protect both. I think it's an emergency because if you have to move a mobile home from a park at least that came or still has some wheels with the foundation around it, which these never have had wheels, but still it's unfair leverage against them too. So they should be protected at the same time we are. Got it. And are these just communities you're referring to, not an all out overall rent control situation or is that for every rented property in the city? Oh no, just, just would be the, the manufactured home, home communities and the mobile home parks. Right. I mean, just this that. is a community as compared to a park, but they're very similar situations. It's just that our that. units are probably worth double what uh, a typical mobile home, home park, but they need protections too. So. I think we have an emergency and I hope you agree.
Thank you. Thank you. Respectfully, like to be heard. My name is Lori Greenberg. Do you have something to do with this, Lori? Oh yes. Okay. okay. I'm the attorney for Hometown America. Okay. And Hometown America is here. Yeah. Hi, um, Hometown America. The regional managers here, and the manager of this community is here. Okay. Um, my name is Lori Greenberg. First of all, um, thank you. I got this notice of this meeting four days ago. I've been trying to reach the attorney and try. I really think w what should happen here is that the parties sit down and actually talk to each other. Me, the attorney the representatives and the representatives from hometown. It doesn't really belong here. Um, I represent about 100 mobile home parks. I've been doing this 30 years. Some are trailer parks, some are manufactured housing communities, some are mobile home parks, just like there's nice developments and yucky developments. This one happens to be a beautiful manufactured housing community. Um, I represent Berryman's Branch. It's a beautiful manufactured housing community. I've been there. They have lots of facilities. <coughs> Hometown America, and I'll have their regional manager talk to you, is very committed to all of their communities. They are not a dump and run. They are a very, very highly regarded entity in the industry. Um, the increase this year was 3%. And my, the attorney for the tenants is just very misguided there, as, as far as these fees. There is no obligation to disclose and break down all the pieces and components of rent. Rent is rent. However, the code section he keeps referring to says you have to disclose fees. So if you charge a late fee, if you charge a fee for um, legal fees, if you charge a fee for a uh, bounce check, that has to be in the lease. That's what that code section's about. If you charge a fee for credit checks, that's what that code section's about. It's not about breaking down the lease. Like I said, I wrote the lease that's used throughout the state of New Jersey. I also represent 100 mobile home parks. They don't, nobody breaks it down like that. We don't object to giving him that information. It's just not done. It changes every year. And also, mobile home parks don't, or any landlord, because I represent about 500 properties, don't give leases every year. They give a lease. If they have to change it, they change it. There's not an emergency situation because this is a 3% rent increase. It's not more than that probably if with all the other costs it could even end up they might might end up working well making out however these residents have gotten increases under the prior landlord but we're not dealing with that what we're dealing with is a lease that's used throughout the country by hometown america with things that protect the residents and things that protect hometown america we are against very against the town getting into the rent control business and i'm going to tell you a little story i am from cherry hill all right, Cherry Hill's not Millville. I know that. Cherry Hill put in rent control. As a result of rent control in Cherry Hill, we had an apartment building that was condemned. Our communities, our mobile home park communities, became trailer parks because there was so much in the rent control ordinance that restricted the landlord's ability to raise the rents, to provide services. They just said, oh well, they are what they are. Rent control cuts both ways. Rent control can make things very unpleasant. I was involved in Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill's unwound its rent control ordinance because of all the litigation against the town and because of what happened to the communities. We had an apartment complex in Cherry Hill. They put in rent control. That apartment complex was Windsor Towers. It used to be beautiful. It used to be people would you know give anything to stay there. Now it's a drug haven. They've unwound rent control in Cherry Hill. That means it's stopping. They unwound rent control in Hazlitt because they had the same problem. They had countless litigation. They had countless problems. They had, no one was ever happy. And the rent control ordinance didn't work. There was, a, um, I'm trying to think of other towns. There's another town where they're unwinding rent control right now. Jackson, they put in vacancy decontrol. control. Your, this ordinance, which we totally disagree with, doesn't have vacancy decontrol. control. Well, what's that? That means when a tenant sells their home, the landlord can set a market rent. Why do you want to do that, you would ask? Well, because if you don't do that, there's no release valve. If you think that all that a CPI will cover what the real costs are, if any of you know what really a CPI is, it's a made up number that's governed by, regulated by the government. You can call it the consumer price index, you can call it whatever you want, but it really is a manipulated number. So if you think that just getting a CPI every year is gonna let a landlord catch up, it doesn't. Let's talk about Jackson. Jackson has a CPI and they had no vacancy decontrol. So what happened? You got people 
paying $300 a month without vacancy decontrol, what do you think they're going to go up by? They're only going to go up by a small percentage. And after 35 years, those communities deteriorated. So what they do? They put in vacancy decontrol. 80% of the ordinances in New Jersey have vacancy decontrol. This one, which I totally disagree with, doesn't provide that. Mm -hmm. So you get a situation where there's no release valve. Jackson used to have hardship rent increases after hardship rent increases because people had to make up for that difference. I could go into a whole lecture to you about the problems with rent control. It's something I deal with. It's something I make a lot of money dealing with. It's not how I want to practice my, my law. But I think the best thing we can do here is have the parties get together, maybe with a township official. That helps. And sit down and have a real legitimate conversation. Maybe explain and show the attorney for the tenants that there is not required to be a breakdown if he just misinterprets the law. But and also to get rid of this fear. Landlords can't come in and just jack up the rents, nor do they want to, because landlords end up selling homes. In the 32, 30 years I've been doing this, two homes have been removed. Now, the residents said the sales of prices went down on houses. They did. Do you know why? Ever hear of the SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank? The SAFE Act and Dodd-Frank, and this make, made mobile homes part, instead of, part of regular mortgages. So what happened was banks don't like to lend to mobile homes. All you can get on a small mortgage is $1,000 of fees. Banks don't like to lend to mobile homes. They stop lending to mobile homes. Now that's something that as MHI homeowners uh, for New Jersey and uh, for the country is trying to work with the Trump administration to take mobile homes out. They never were part of this before. Now they were. Once they became, once mobile home loans became part of the um, regular mortgages, the price of the homes went to 50% because they had to, everything had to be sold for cash. They couldn't get loans. That's terrible. We're fighting that. I wanted to get the residents to, you know, the residents association, Gary Miller from the uh, mobile home, actual mobile homeowners, MOA, to come join us and help fight this because it's a problem that affects everyone in the country, not just New Jersey. They took away the ability of older homes to refinance. They took away the ability for mobile homes. And it's because it's a land lease community. I want my client to get up here and tell you about Hometown America and what kind of an organization it is. They are very responsive. I've represented them throughout this state. Whenever there's a problem and you don't know me, I always tell the town, I'm your partner. We're partners. Come call me. I get calls from town all the time saying, and, and your solicitor called me, and I reached out to the attorney. They call me and they say, hey, there's a tenant with this problem, or there's this or there's that. Can you take care of it? And I take care of it. My client will take care of it. They're very, very, very responsive. We were involved in Oaks of Weymouth. And in Oaks, they put in vacancy decontrol because they had a problem there. Um, we were in, in Weymouth's rent control. But I'm telling you, rent control creates animosity, doesn't solve the problem, and creates many more problems than you would think. Um, and creates lots and lots of litigation. So we're against rent control, but what we're in favor of is talking and trying to communicate. And what I would suggest very strongly is have a meeting. We can do it, facilitate it through you before you as a township get in the business of rent control, which I really don't think you want to. It's costly for the town, it's costly for everybody. The better way is to talk to each other. And I'm, I strongly suggest that. And I think that there's a lot of misconceptions. Like people might think the value of their house went down because of something Hometown America did. It went down because of something, I'm sorry, Obama did. It went down because of Dodd-Frank and the SAFE Act. And I have all the information on that. I'd be glad to supply it to you, but I think a lot of you are familiar with it. You got two other mobile home parks. Do you want to drag them in on this? Do you want to have hearings? Do you want to have everybody complaining? They don't, about any increase? Nobody wants to be in this business. The best thing to do, I'm talking about in the business of rent control, everybody who gets into it is sorry they did. The best thing to do is to get the people to talk to each other. Um, a resident made a comment about a, her light. I asked my client if they knew about it. I'm going to make sure that that's taken care of. That's a serious issue. I don't know. Hold, hold, hold on, folks. Let her finish. Well, I don't know. That's the whole point of talking. That's the whole point of open communication. I have the... Um, regional manager and the manager for home for this 
community here tonight, and I'd like them to say something about, if she knows about that light, we certainly know about it now, and about whatever, about Hometown America, because it is, they take a lot of pride in what they do. Do either one of you ladies want to get up? Yeah. Councilor, before, before you leave, uh, while, while you're still there, how many uh, of them do you have compared to Liberty Village? I mean, Liberty Village itself, 55 and older uh, communities, uh, instead of just trailer parks, this is a 55 and older community, not just a trailer park. I'm About not half of my communities are 55 plus. Half of them? And then I represent a lot of places that are um, down the shore, what down I would call shore. down the shore. A lot of places that are in Cape May, a lot of places that are in Ocean County. Um, and about half of them are 55 plus. And like I said, about half of them are under rent control, the other half are not. Right, that's right. And it saying, yeah. creates, yeah. rent control creates animosity. It puts a, yeah. a barrier between the residents and the owner, but it also creates a problem for the township. But, so but is it true that some of them do have rent control? Liberty yes. Village, like, those, like Liberty Village, correct? Not this ordinance. No, no, I know that, but this others, ordinance, are, others Some in of this them area? have rent control. Right, um, and they do. They do, and some yeah. of them don't. Right. And the ones that don't, honestly, we have, we have less animosity. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is they all get together, and they don't want, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make a broad brush stroke. They don't wanna right. pay any rent increase at all. And they think rent control means they're not gonna pay a rent increase. That's not how it works. Okay. And, you could, know, could, that- uh, Councilor, could you give me a list of those that uh, do have rent control in this area? Uh, like Liberty Village, 55 and older, could you provide us with that? Oh, uh, sure, I Appreciate can. Appreciate it. And Thank I, you. you know, I, I deal with, well, you probably wouldn't, right. I have to think of where exactly I'm, like- It's okay. Yeah, when Carver, you get it. Pitts Grove. Will you please um, send that to our uh, municipal clerk? We would appreciate sure. it. Sure. List, list of rent control ordinances. In our area. 55 and older communities only. Well, you understand. Yeah, I um, do. 55 and older Do you understand communities that they only. don't break rent control down by, by type of community? Well, I, why, well then, then what, so, what, you know, our, like, our, our situation here is a 55 and older. You know, I think that's the question. But you that can't we're, make we're a rent control at. ordinance. For but you're saying that there are those that are 55 and older and I'm asking you to provide us uh, with that list, that's all. And I don't have a problem with that, but I just wanna make it clear to you no. that what they do is they rent control, you can't spot zone, you can't spot rent control. That's okay. So they rent control, like Jackson has nine, um, nine parks. Five of them are 55 and older, four of them aren't. There's one rent control ordinance. So I'll give you the rent control ordinances in of, this area. In this area. South Jersey. South Jersey. Appreciate it. No Thank problem. You. And you don't consider, I'm just, you wouldn't no, consider no, Jackson, no, we're not South Jackson, Jersey. We're not Jackson. We're not. We're uh, not. So Pitts Trenton, Grove. We're, we're not that area. We're in a different Fine. area down I got, here. And I have them, and I know them. Okay. Would I, I, would I would appreciate it. Them. Thank you. Did you want to say something? Hi. Um, my name is Tara Edmonds. I'm the regional for Hometown America. Um, I manage the East Region, so I have about <clears throat> 13 properties, over 5,000 homes. Majority are. Yeah. They can't hear. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Majority is 55 okay. and older. I just wanted to make some reference as far as the services at Liberty Village and the lease. Um, correct, we did put out a new lease. The residents were not happy with a lot of the verbiage in the lease. Um, we went and did an addendum to it to change some of that. They still were not happy. I had a meeting with. Um, I want to say the HOA and maybe five residents that represented the rest of the property. Um, we made every single change that they wanted in the lease. We rewrote it, we sent it out. The only thing we did not change was we did not break down the rent. All the services that we provide are in our lease, the same services as prior, so we can also give you a copy of our lease. Um, I will touch base on the services um, all of their landscaping is done all of the snow removal is provided to them the first mm -hmm. half of the year when we took over the property we pretty much do all of our services in-house so that would be landscaping that would be snow removal when we did that they were not happy with the the way it was done they weren't happy with how quickly it was done so the year the following year um, this year we actually contracted everything out so that we can provide them the service that they were accustomed to. I mean, it was, you know, it was something we decided to do. We, it didn't go great the first year, but we've made adjustments. So now they have a new snow vendor and a new landscaper. Um, we did have 
issues with our first vendor that we used for snow removal. Crystal immediately replaced them. We have a brand new person in place and he's doing the landscaping. From what I've been told, the new, land, the new vendor is doing a great job. So understand that they were not happy with services. We made the adjustment. I made the adjustments to the, um, to the lease. Every single service is in that lease and it's provided for them. We've also mm -hmm. added additional um, capital improvements to the clubhouse. We added a full gym, we've upgraded their furniture. You know, we've listened to them in meetings and okay. we've taken care of some stuff and we've put improvements. Mm -hmm. When we took over, they had 18 vacant lots. Um, the previous owner stopped selling due to the fact that the home costs went down and they could, he couldn't sell them for where he was prior years. So we've come in and we're starting to put homes on those lots and we're selling them. So granted, not as much as before, but you're not gonna have vacant lots anymore. You can have all lots and new homes around there, so the community will be full. So that eventually will help home costs as well because someone's not driving and you see all deserted land. So we're actually putting in the money to the property and we're putting in new homes. We're doing about four or five a year. Okay, are they uh, for 55 and older, the homes you're selling? 55 and older is our entire community. Okay. And I wanted to reference Delaware. Um, it's rent justification. It's not a rent control state. Rent justification went into place about four or five years ago. We are not in a lawsuit. They did try to bring a lawsuit upon us. It went to Supreme Court and it was dismissed because it really had no grounds to stand on. So I just wanted to reference that. Okay. We are not being sued all over the place. We have over 50 communities. The majority of them are 55 and older. We're all through California, Florida, the Northeast. Um, we have a very good reputation. We hold on to our properties. We put in a lot of capital improvement and is not um, passed through to the residents. Um, I think we've done everything we've been asked to by the residents, the services, the lease that they requested, the verbiage in the lease, all the services that they requested. The one thing we did not do because our attorney stated we did not have to was break down the difference in the rent. To break down that information is, I know you don't have to do it, mm -hmm. but if is, is there a reason why you choose not to if it's causing so much stress from the community? We chose not to. Um, our attorney advises that we did not have to. I, I'm not saying that. We'll let, I'll let him answer. It changes all the time. So to put on a number. On a yearly basis or on a monthly basis? On, it can change on a monthly or an annual basis. You put numbers in there and they're not valid tomorrow. So rent is rent. They pay rent. They don't pay. You could keep saying that, but, but to them, they're not hearing that. So that, to, for but you to keep saying But do you understand, what, uh, we're not against doing it, but I, it doesn't make sense to do it. Because we're not gonna, you're not gonna issue a new lease every year, are you? No, we don't issue a new lease every year. We just send out an agenda before. Um, so this could be settled this evening. You're saying that you can do it, and if that, what they're asking, this could be settled tonight. Am I right? If that's the only thing they wanted, that's not a big deal to do. But it's going to change. But we're Hold not, on, ma'am. And we're not, then we're not opening our books. You know, if we say this is what we pay, then there's going to be, well, did you really pay that? And can you provide that? And, and at that point. Was that done before, though? I mean, with, no, with, with no. the previous people? I, I don't what? know, but all I can tell you is I have the list or the past years since 2006. The rent increase went anywhere from zero to 3.9 percent we hit a three percent he was very sporadic mm -hmm. i can give you the audit from when we took over the property there definitely were increases again 1.1 mm -hmm. 3.9 2.5 3.4 so they were it, he didn't not increase um rent right and well, I'm, I'm not sure that they're saying from what i'm hearing they're not saying we don't expect our rent to go up they're basically saying we want an understanding of why mm -hmm. and, and what is causing it. I guess profit would be part of it as well. But uh, I think dialogue is gonna be key. Yeah. That's what I was gonna focus on, Commissioner. I think that that meeting should, should happen and I'll be more than happy to have our attorney sit in that so that uh, there can be open communications with your attorney and also their attorney and maybe we can get to settle sooner than later. And I, I, that's how I started off saying we should have a meeting okay. versus Agreed. throwing this in your lap. 
correct. We should definitely have a meeting. And I did reach out to the other attorney. And, uh, so everybody Lewis. has their information, Mr. Jacobs. You have her information. Our attorney has everyone else's information. Maybe yes. we can settle it that way. Obviously, we're not going to do that tonight. Okay, very good. Thank right. you for coming. Did you want a we appreciate copy it. of the... Okay. Whatever you have, we'll take. All right. Yeah. How's that? This is my leaf and my business card. Thank you. My email. If you want to email me that way. And I'll email you that way. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Greenman. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out as well. Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, going back to old business under the Vineland Millville UEZ discussion. Yes. Okay. So, were you aware of the the situation with that? Has um, nobody brought looked to you with that? Okay. I think uh, um, was it who has to have it placed on? Was it you? Say, say it again. The I UEZ. Who who had that placed on? I think sh I think Jim gave you that directive. Yeah, it's in reference to the money that we owe the city of Vineland right. and UEZ. There right. was a letter that was given to us. Um, during the last commission, and I think that this commission should take the responsibility and pay what is owed to the city of Vineland. Can you do that in the form of a motion, uh, Clerk? Um, sure, we can do that. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm, I'm Mr. Mayor, I'm, I make the motion that uh, we do it. Pay the bill. Okay, sure. Mar Mar yes, Mar 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 Okay. I, could could we table the dis, could we table the resolution until we just have some more information? I'm not expressing any type of disapproval, but just rather that we have the preparation and schedule this for another meeting. So the June sixth meeting. Uh, I have no problems with that. There is a letter that we did receive from Mayor Fanucci that should be in our file. It should be in the files. I'll and be able to get that. Additionally, Madam Clerk, also exploring the option of looking into, as Marcy had pointed out, the budget for those cycles and making sure that if there were disbursements, and that it would be in compliance with those fiscal You'll years. You get give us the total. Of the okay, thank you. Right. Okay. Okay, so we were we were referring Very to good. this this okay, this year, but we have, we own three years. Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. So I'll yeah, get all the in, uh, information, have it put on the next. Let's look at it. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Discussions all right. of commissioners. Commissioner Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. From the Parks Department, we continue cutting the city properties, including uh, Noble Street, Community Gardens, the Buck Park. Churchill Street and Cedar. We've also leveled and cleaned up Union Lake Ball Field, which was needed. Uh, you've been out there previous years, you'll see that it was uh, truly needed. We've put 10 ton of infield mix down there, and, and we also changed a numerous amount of light bulbs out there. So you could actually play at night now and see the ball so you don't get hit in the face. So. Uh, actually, we uh, the flagpole, of course, in part, I don't know if you noticed that, the flagpole, as soon as you come in, it's been painted and repainted, so that should sparkle as you drive into town. And we started turning on the irrigation at the ball field, so um, would help with the, uh, the look on the, uh, on the grass there. You can see that there's banners now on High Street, uh, banners and flags on High Street and showing the districts on High Street, uh, including the glass arts area. Just uh, a couple events coming up. We have the next Recreation and Volunteer Committee meeting, the RVC meeting, this, uh, not this Thursday, but Thursday, May 31st, at the Creative Enterprise Center. I just want to talk uh, just a moment about the, the, the RVC, the Recreation and Volunteer Committee. That committee was put together for the people. Um, Commissioner uh, Pepitone, the mayor, all the commissioners have been there. It's, it's a committee for everyone. So I don't know if the ladies from Liberty are familiar with it, but it's a, it's a committee that's rec recreation and volunteer based. So basically going around the city and we discuss what the issues are in the city and how we can help as volunteers. And we would really love 
your help. We have no representatives, not putting you on the spot, from Liberty Village, but we'd love to have your input on that. But that's basically what that is about, and uh, we, we hope to get more volunteers. We've had about 20 to 30 people out there. We've had yeah. some, some wings out there, and, and Regina has treated us to sure. dinner a few times. So we, and we actually have a cleanup coming up in Third Ward. That's our first uh, event. It's the Third Ward Trash for Treasure, Saturday, June 2nd. And it's basically a, it's a cleanup, but we want to have the whole community involved. So it's a treasure hunt as well. So we love everyone to come out and support that. And this is a committee that is put together for you. We heard you. We want you to be involved in it. We want you engaged in it. And here's your opportunity. It's led by you. Although the commissioners are there, we listen to you. And it's not an autocratic situation. It's totally democratic. And we, we do what you want us to do. So that's, that's what that's there for. I just want to speak a moment about that. Also, there's a summer concert uh, coming up Friday, June 1st at Corson Park. That's something that we do annually. And something I love is the fishing tournament with the, uh, the kids. Mayor, are you, you're familiar with that, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's coming up on June 9th. And uh, that is all I have from the parks department. Thank you for the time. You're welcome, Commissioner. Commissioner Pepitone. Uh, not much. I will be introducing the, um, the fire department report and the police department report later in the regular meeting. But with that, I'll move on. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Commissioner Gonzalez. I have no comment at this time, Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Perry. Uh, just want to thank uh, Mr. Jacobs and the people from Liberty Village. Thank you for coming. Uh, we will be listening to you. Uh, we're looking forward to meet uh, with Hometown America, you know, in the very near future to, to see where we can reach some kind of an agreement. I think that's the proper thing to do. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if anybody's going to stay for the 7 o'clock meeting, but you don't have to stay for a 7 o'clock meeting. I'd, I'd be back home myself because it's going to be a, a stormy night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't get them around. Oh, the, the rest of them coming. <laughs> that's the backup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here they come. They're, they're uh, coming at 7 o'clock. Stay for the meeting then. Have a seat. It took 10 minutes to find a parking Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Mayor, I can do the back hoe. That's good stuff. Who, I need to do the back hoe under your back. Okay. Anything else, Vice Mayor? No, Mayor. No, Mayor. All right. Uh, I do have, I'll, I'll turn it over to, Re to Regina. There we get now. Okay, Regina. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for coming, guys. Regina, do you want me to go through the list that we're adding on? Huh? I have a list that we're adding. Do you want me to go through the list that we're adding? It's, it includes I just wanted his permission to add it. I don't know if I'm going to add them. I can go through my list if you want. Okay, if you all defer to me, I have a list. Okay. Let me get it easy. Unless you want to. When you guys meet the Public Liberty Village, a lot of times it hangs in the daytime, and I can't make it because I'm making education. But I wish it would be an easy to read so I could attend, which I'd really like to see in action. Very nice. You're welcome. That's all right, guys. Have a great night. Have a great night. Thanks for coming. Thank you. 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 Mayor, I'm, I'm actually going to request that we add a few items on. So um, She's going to add it with her list. That's the next meeting. These she were last the minute things that couldn't be added. You want to do that now? Yes, I'm just going to go through the list. All right, so I'll turn it over to you. Requested Madam, to be added. Okay, Madam so Clerk, go ahead. Okay, so the first item would be a resolution authorizing a contract through a non fair and open process with CME Associates. Um, this hold on, is hold on, Jeannie, hold on. Yeah, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Is your microphone turned off? Make sure that's. They're a social bunch. I'm on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just think it's back rather. <laughs> Can you hear? Yeah. It's a little low. You're, you're younger than we are. <clears throat> All right, I think you're good, Jim. Okay, very good. So the first item that's being requested to be added on is a resolution authorizing a contract through a non fair and open process with CME Associates to prepare a redevelopment study in an amount not to exceed $10,000. So um, it wouldn't require the, the pay to play. 
And then um, the second item, is, is, can I have a consensus on that first? Go ahead. What, what is it? It's <coughs> Vice Mayor, did you want to? Um, it's for a redevelopment. What we're hiring is another firm to look at it so that we can make some adjustments that are going to be in favor for the city. That's basically how it's done. Yes. All right. And there's I need, no a, need, I need a consensus for that. I'm sorry. There's no need for pay to play. That's correct. There's no right. need for pay to play. So we got to say yay or nay. All in favor? All, yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so look. Did I, you say aye or no? No. I just, no. I, not having a, not having additional information, I would have liked to have had the information beforehand, but okay. I understand that it's placed on the agenda, but. This is placed on the agenda. This is not the vote. Yeah. Exactly. It's placed on the agenda? Yeah. To be placed yeah. on the agenda. Okay, yeah. I agree to place, okay. to place on the agenda. Okay, put on okay. the agenda. Okay. okay. Uh, second item is an, um, authorizing a contract through a non-fair and open process with Capehart Scatcherd to provide professional services with respect to litigation in an amount not to exceed $17,000. So, do you have information yeah, on this? Yeah, put that on the agenda for okay. tonight. Do you, okay. Do you have information on the Information on that? Yeah, yeah. Closed session. Know. Put it on there. I have to do on that in closed agenda. session. Just uh, closed. Oh, this is closed session? Okay, because it's for litigation. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yes. A resolution directing the Millville Planning Board to investigate the suitability of designating certain property a redevelopment area. So, this would just be um, giving them a directive. Very good. To do a study. Kay. Okay. Um, the fourth item is a resolution authorizing purchase of a backhoe from Groff Tractor through the Middlesex Regional Cooperative in the amount of $107,115, which I believe we got certification of funds for. We do have certification of funds, and that's going to be a piece of equipment that's going to be used uh, by two departments, uh, actually the sewer department and also the streets and roads department. Okay. Coming from and capital, so that's it's coming from through. capital, and we do have the money. Okay. Yep. That was it. So I can go on. Yeah. All right. So we'll go into new business. Okay. Uh, we already handled that, Mayor. All right. Public comments. Anyone that would like to make a comment, please go to the podium, state your name, your concerns, limit your comments to five minutes, please. Good evening, Tim McCarty, Movo. Uh, I know it was tabled, but if we didn't have a contract for two years with the city of Vineland, why are we going to pay them that money for no contract? And the second item is what? Tim, you're talking about UEZ? Yes. So if there's no contract signed, why are we obligated to pay for anything to the city of Vineland? And also, under the contract, what are we getting as a city? Are they giving us an employee? Are they doing paperwork? Are they doing anything for us? I mean, did they earn the 30000 I mean, I can sign a contract with you, Commissioner, and or you can sign one with me, and you don't do nothing for me. You should give the manager a chance. I really think we should look into that. But for two years, no contract, no payment. Sorry, my tax dollars, your tax dollars. Also, the adding to the resolutions that just happened tonight onto the commission meeting agendas. We have ordinances about adding on. These are not emergency add-ons. They should be waiting until the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Angeline from Home Millville, I'd like to just um, reiterate, I could send you a bill for anything. I mean, if that's all it takes in the city to get money, let me know. I'll send you a bill. Unless you have a contract where there's an agreed upon service that's going to be provided, that's signed and agreed upon, then we, there's no money owed. We don't owe anybody any money unless we have a contract, and it has to be clear what services that are going to be provided. What have we gotten for the last three years? And if we've gotten anything, I don't care if they were doing a great job for the last three years. It's both parties' responsibility. If I went out there and cut the grass for the park and just sent you a bill, that doesn't mean that you're gonna pay me just because I did it. You would want a contract. You would want something in writing and a commitment from both sides 
to say, this is what I owe you for. And it's a responsibility of you as commissioners and of our solicitor to advise you properly that we can't just pay somebody because they sent you a bill. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? I close the comments, public comment portion of this meeting. Mayor, can I just address the policy for um, add-ons for the agenda items? Yes. Okay, the policy we've always gone by since I've been here is if it's within 24 hours, I can't just arbitrarily add something unless it comes before the full commission at a work session and I get the consensus to add it. So that's been the past commission and this commission. That's been the practice. The only item I've added um, tonight was with regard to that emergency appropriation for the asbestos and that's because we can't do an emergency appropriation without the resolution authorizing the change order. So it wouldn't make sense to have the ones. That was probably the first and only time we've done that. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Comments by commissioners? Commissioner Cooper? Uh, no comment at this time, ma'am. Commissioner Pepitone? Um, I'm, I'm interested to in finding out what's, what, what, what went on with the Z money, but um, if somebody provided a service for me and I didn't actually have the contract, but they did the service, that piece of paper itself wouldn't be the determining factor. If we owe somebody something for something that they did, then I think it's fair to pay them. At this point, I don't know what it is, but I will find out. But your, your comment of, well, if there's no contract, it doesn't exist, that's silly. If you did something for me, we had an agreement and, and I, and, and I said I was going to pay you, and then you say, well, there's no contract. I'm not going to pay you. That, 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 that's not good reasoning. I understand the clarity of saying having a contract in place for things, and, and, they, and there should be there. But for whatever reason, the contract wasn't there. I wasn't there two years ago. But if services were rendered, we needed need to pay our bills. I don't know what they were at this point, but I will find out. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Dalvis? No comment. Vice Mayor? Not at this time, Mayor. Thank you. Well, I don't either. Uh, so, <coughs> Madam Clerk, okay, we resolution? Have resolution authorizing a closed session regarding the following matters. Millville Plastics under redevelopment agreement contract negotiations. 109 East Main Street under potential litigation. CDBG loans under potential litigation. LKQ under redevelopment agreement contract negotiations. I need a Can I get a motion? Is my motion to be adjourned? Second. A motion for the resolution. Just for the resolution. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Cooper. All in favor? I, say, I do a roll call. Vote. Roll call. Go ahead. Commissioner Pepitone? Yes. Vice Mayor Parent? Yes. Commissioner Udalavis? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Mayor Santiago? Yes. Okay, we're going to close session. All right, we'll be back. Thank you. Thank you.
I put one in my mouth. Ah. I couldn't spit it out anymore. Okay. Hey, we're up here. I don't know if it's good stuff or bad stuff. I just I need a motion to close the uh, work session, please. Have a motion to close. Move to close closed session. Second. 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 